Hello, my name is Michael Liu, and today I'll be doing a screencast of the user interface that we created to help caregivers specify the tasks that they want help with at a much higher abstraction level than what the backend PompDP model requires. So essentially, we provide a more intuitive method in which they can specify the tasks that they want help with. Uh, today, I'll be going over the hand washing task and I'll explain all the steps in which a user needs to do in order to correctly specify it. Note that for the purpose of this screencast, I will only specify the first parts of hand washing, which consists of turning the tap on and getting our hands wet. So I won't be covering the hand washing task in its entirety. So the first thing we need to do is to let the caregiver set up a dementia profile, uh, which corresponds to a description of the person with dementia in which the system is trying to help. So under File, we click on Dementia Profile, and uh, we see there are certain parameters that need to be inputted, such as the person's name, their age, their gender, and how severe their dementia is. Uh, using a combination of these parameters, so uh, we we can make an educated guess as to the cognitive ability of the person with dementia we're trying to help, and this is very helpful in generating certain values that's required by the backend AI model. So let's just uh, assume that we're going to help out Amanda with her task of hand washing. She's six years old, female, and has somewhere between medium and severe dementia. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to choose the room in which the task, the hand, the hand washing task takes place in. So uh, the hand washing task takes place in the bathroom, but for other tasks you might want to, it might take place in the kitchen, say if you're making tea. Okay, so now the next step is to create the task itself. So the little plus icon on the right hand side lets you add a task and click on it and we type in hand washing. Okay, so now that the task is created, um, the next thing we want to do is specify the task environment. So these are basically all the objects that's involved in the task. Again, because we're only doing the first two steps of hand washing, only two objects are actually involved, which are tab and hands. On the left hand side menu, we see the ontology of objects that the UI currently supports. We currently only have six objects, but eventually this will be expanded to a much wider variety. Uh, you can get an object onto the canvas area by clicking on the object on the left hand side menu. So clicking on tab gets you a tab object, clicking on the hands gets you a hands object. And again, these are the only two objects we need. Uh, now that we have successfully set up the task environment, we need to confirm the initial states of these objects. So when you're washing your hands, what we expect is that the tab is initially off and our hands are uh, initially dry. So uh, by single clicking on the tab object, we see that its current state is off, which is what we want. And for the hands, there's two attributes we want uh, inter hands, how dry the hands are and how clean they are. Uh, we, the hands being dry and dirty is an acceptable uh, initial condition for us. So that's good. So now that we've confirmed the initial states of the task environment, the next thing we want to do is to break down the task of hand washing into logical steps. So how you want to think about a step is you want to identify the object which uh, initiates the action in the step. You want to identify what exact action is actually performed in the step. And finally, you want to think about whether this action affects any other objects. So in terms of hand washing, the first step is to uh, turn the tap on. So here in the steps panel, by clicking on the little um, plus icon, you can add a new step. So here we add in the step of turning the tap on. Turn tap on. Okay, the UI guides you through this process as well. So it tells you to choose the object that this step applies to. So again, this is the object that initiates the step. In this case, it's going to be tap. And then after that, we get a little pop-up that tells you 
uh, you need to select uh, the action that you want to perform. So right now there's only one choice which is to turn the tap on. Uh, this is because when the tap is in its current state, which is off, there's only one possible action that can be applied to it. Uh, when the tap is in another state, say the on state, then more actions become available. But for now, we just wanted to turn the tap on, so we click OK, and we generate a step. On the right-hand side menu in the steps panel, we see that the preconditions to execute the step is that the tab is off, and the post condition or the result of the step is that the tab is now turned on, and these are automatically generated. Another thing that's automatically generated by the UI is a set of goal states. So essentially, goal states are uh, what we want to accomplish in the task. Uh, in this case, we eventually want the tab to be on in order to wash our hands. The little slider here, um, rep it's called the amount of prompting required. So this is essentially how important uh, this state is, getting to this state is. Um, because our task is hand washing, we want to basically apply some water onto our hands. Uh, the tapping on is a necessary condition to achieve that. So the amount of prompting uh, should be quite high. So we just leave it as it is. Uh, and uh, what, what the amount of prompting really means uh, in the real world is that uh, if this is set to a high value, then the eye system would uh, prompt the person with dementia to do this step uh, if they forget. If the prompting value is low, then uh, the eye system will decide whether it's a good idea to prompt or not, or whether it's okay to just let it be. Okay, so we've successfully completed the specification of the first step, which is turning the tap on. So now let's add the second step, uh, which is to wet our hands. So in terms of wetting our hands, the object performing the action is going to be the tap. The action is going to be wetting and hands is a recipient of the action. So the, we click on tap because this is the object that initiates action. Now you see the drop down menu has a lot more choices of actions to perform because the tap is now in the on state. Uh, we can either wet hands, we can turn it off, turn the tap off, or we can uh, fill some sort of container, which is ap applicable in other tasks such as uh, tea making. So for now, we just select wet, click on OK, and now we need to choose the object that the wetting action acts on. Uh, all the possible objects that it can act on will be highlighted in red. In this case, uh, we only have hands, so hands is highlighted in red. And we click on hands, and now we've generated the second step. And as you see here, the preconditions and post conditions are automatically generated as well. Uh, goal states is also automatically generated, so the fact that the hand is now uh, wet is what we want in the end, so we leave it as it is. Whether it's dirty or not is not going to be part of this specification because we're only dealing with the first few steps of hand washing, so we can just remove that from the goal states by clicking on the X icon. Okay, so now we've successfully successfully uh, specify the first two steps of the hand washing task. And this, the, the user essentially only needs to s click on the object performing action and then action, and possibly an object to act on. And just with this these few clicks, they can generate the steps, which is much easier than manually coming up with all the information that the backend AI model requires. Uh, to, to take a look at the values that actually get generated in the back end, uh, we can click on the preview button. So by clicking on it, we see all these different tables and values that's required by the back end model, and these get generated. So ability corresponds to the cognitive abilities of the person with dementia, so how likely they're able to perform a certain task. Uh, so the set of actions that's involved in the task, uh, these are all the objects and their states uh, that consist of the task environment. 
uh, affective behavior and precondition for affective behaviors uh, describe basically what's what object needs to be in which state before a step or action can be performed and the fact is the result of those actions. Reward and reverse description is basically uh, what's described in the goal states. And finally, observation values, behavior sensor models, sensor model, these are basically tables containing uh, sensor information on uh, how the system detects uh, certain actions and uh, its ability to detect state of certain objects as well. Okay, so if we're satisfied uh, with the uh, tables that get generated, then we can actually generate the actual uh, tables and write them to a database. So we click on Generate. And this is running in Eclipse, so we can take a look at the Eclipse console. And we see that uh, it's writing all these uh, values into the database and it's successfully created it. After the database has been created, what we want to do is then click on the Spud button, which generates a text uh, file, which is a textual representation of all the information that's specified in the database. So click on Spud. And again, looking at the Eclipse console, we see that uh, it essentially goes through the database and retrieves all the values and writes them into a text file called handwashing.txe located in the temp directory. So I'm just going to briefly show you what the file looks like. Uh, so, okay, so I'm in the temp directory right now and I'm going to open up the handwashing.txe file. So this is a spud file and it contains various pr parameters that correspond to the PalmDP model specification. And that's it for the demo. Thank you very much.